All right. Any questions? I think just a good, real solid, a really good, solid team. You know, they play together, play hard. They've had uh, some close ones that they've gotten out of, and uh, that's the biggest thing. You see guys that play hard, play together. Coach uh, Chance uh, really performed well in the time that he had in the game. Just talk about how he's progressed in practice, where he you gave him that opportunity there. I think he's gotten better and better. You know, I think that and he is kind of explosive as far as, uh, you know, zipping the ball downfield. And, uh, you know, and I, I think that uh, uh, that and we've got uh, some young receivers. We're kind of excited to see what they can do. And they did some good things, too. So it was exciting to see Ra uh, uh, Ra and, uh, and uh, Rufus get touchdowns. And then Ducking did some good things. And then... Um, uh, but yeah, I thought he looked good, and he, you know, he looks similar to that in practice every day. Uh, different on offense, in uh, some new faces on defense, but uh, you know, defensively, schematically, the same. Uh, well, probably a little more aggressive on offense. Uh, Mark Stoops of Kentucky says your wide receivers are much improved from the, from last year to this year. <coughs> How have you gotten to that point? Just reps or just being in the system longer with those guys? Yeah, just getting older and throwing more balls. You know, everybody's caught more balls. Coach, I noticed on the uh, roster that linebacker Rodney Gross isn't listed anymore. I guess he's not with the program anymore. Uh, no, he's not. Rodney's not with the team. Mike, against Vanderbilt, I think it was four receivers that each had five or more receptions. I mean, as a coach, how good is it for you to kind of see that? And, I mean, what does it kind of mean for this offense? How important is it for that offense to be able to spread the ball around like that? Uh, it's important that we have good distribution, and we definitely want uh, – and we had good distribution uh, the other night, you know, where you want all the skill positions to contribute to the offensive effort. and uh, So that was good to see. <laughs> Coach, I know Mark Stoops at times has run some bare fronts and some odd man fronts. You know, what did you see from them last year, and kind of what what makes him such a good defensive coordinator? I, they play hard. The other thing is, is they don't try to do too much. I mean, they're kind of basic and uh, and uh, execute well. Um, you know, they uh, kind of like to keep a shell over things. So blitz once in a while, but. Uh, uh, but, you know, there's real sound, I guess, is the biggest way to describe it. You held Vanderbilt to nine yards rushing, 155 total yards, under 45 plays. How much can a performance like that energize the defense going forward? <clears throat> well, hopefully it does. Hopefully it does uh, something. But, you know, we need to continue the momentum there. Coach Woody Marks and Dylan Johnson continue to run hard for you, and they had – like they had better running lanes against Vanderbilt. What, what have you seen lately from Woody that has allowed him to get through that first level? Well, I, I think he's quicker and more decisive, but then I think our offensive line did a better job uh, moving people around than they maybe have some. <clears throat> Alabama brought a lot of pressure, and it seemed like Vanderbilt – brought more pressure than they normally do. Do you, do you anticipate now that Alabama has had some success with that to see more of that rather than less drop eight as you kind of move forward? Alabama, well, Alabama kind of did what they do. Uh, Vanderbilt pressured, and Vanderbilt's kind of a pressure team, and they pressured us more than I think they have anybody else. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, the better we get up front, the more people we'll see up front trying to attend to things, you know, and then if uh, – <clears throat> if you move the ball effectively, they'll either pressure or drop, and then after that, they'll mix it in to try to keep you off balance. Uh, Mike, uh, the NFL <coughs> Board of Trustees is voting to mandate uh, vaccines for COVID-19 for employees at all Mississippi universities that accept federal funding. That was just news that just came out. I'm wondering if you had any thoughts on that. I don't. I don't comment on any – any you, the, the whole COVID vaccine thing bounces all over the place, and uh, – and a guy can just, you know, that's, uh, that'd be like uh, commenting on each hit in a tennis match, you know. So I'm, I, I don't have any comment. Steve? 
last year to trip to Lexington, six interceptions in the ball game. But outside of that, it, it seemed like you moved the ball between the 20s and defensively you played pretty well. Do you think that carries over and maybe gives you guys a little confidence this week to see that last year was really more about <coughs> what you didn't do than maybe what you did? No, I thought we played really poorly last year uh, in that game. I think he's explosive, still battles consistency. We, uh, He's just got to get it all reined in, and it's sure been a long process. So the quicker we can do that, the better off we'll be. Mike, your uh, your candy corn video went pretty viral on, on social media. Are, are you familiar with the show, Ted Lasso, and have you seen the show comment on that? Um, I haven't. Uh, I can't. Everybody says it's a good show. Um, uh, Everybody says it's a good show. Everybody says you ought to watch it. It requires a little extra technology, more technology than I'm familiar with uh, to get it. I forget where it's at and how you get it. But, uh, um, you know, they say, oh, you stream it, which that just means I'm not, I'm not going to watch a show on my phone. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe somebody will instruct me, hook it up. But I heard it's good. And I am kind of surprised that video uh, was uh, so exciting to a number of people. But um, that's good. You get a lot of candy corn, some people trying to sell that, you know. Do you, do you keep up with, like, English soccer at all? I know you spend some time with Not so. I do rugby. I, I You know, I follow rugby, um, you know. the the uh, uh, But, yeah, um, yeah, the Northern Hemisphere, I like Wales, like New Zealand in the South. Um, but, uh, you know, all those teams are hard not to like. Um, what kind of challenge does Chris Rodriguez pose at Kentucky, and how much confidence do you have in the defense to match up with a running back like him? Uh, he's good. Uh, you know, I, and I thought he was good last year, too. Just a good, solid player. Coach uh, Matt Wells was dismissed at Texas Tech <clears throat> today. There's been three coaches, I think, there in the last 12 years since you were there, and the success hasn't been nearly as good as, as what you were able to do. What made your term so successful there, and why haven't, hasn't that been able to be replicated, do you think? I don't, I don't really know. I mean, we had good players, good coaches, and, uh, and uh, it was a pretty loaded-up conference back then. Uh, you had Nebraska who was biting on the heels to win national championships. You had, uh, you know, Texas and Oklahoma in the top five most years. You had A&M there. You had uh, uh, <clears throat> Colorado kind of roaring along then. Uh, Kansas State was really good then, too. Yeah, it was an exciting conference back then. No, I do not. I, I do not. That's been carefully researched since I was a child, uh, starting at approximately, I'm going to say, three. And <clears throat> although it did have uh, some brighter points in my life, in particular when I was young, you know, the type of thing where it gets all over your hands and your face, um, <clears throat> before long, though, I realized that that was a grave error and there was far better uh, paths ahead than candy corn. So, yeah, I no, I have no interest. I, it's one of those items that, you know, there's a reason they serve it basically once a year because it's not very good to begin with. Sticking with that theme, Coach, if, if the media showed up your house to trick-or-treat, your, you've had a love-hate relationship with some guys in the media, what would you give your favorite members of the media, what would you give your least favorite members of the media as trick-or-treat candy? Oh, shoot, that's a good question. Um, well, the good ones, you know, you try to, um, <clears throat> what would you give? Uh, well, certainly something better than an apple or whatever. We used to have a dentist growing up that would give everybody a toothbrush and his card on it. And then, uh, yeah, he'd have a toothbrush, tell you where to find him. Um, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, you know, something big, kind of the uh, the candy bar. You can't be as reckless as hold the bowl out like some used to when I used to trick-or-treat, like hold the bowl out here, take what you want, and, of course, then you grab handfuls as fast as you can until they shoo you off the porch. Um, we And then, uh, 
Uh, so that there's, you know, so you got to kind of regulate it, but uh, it'd be something good. And then uh, <clears throat> the ones I like uh, less, you try to, you know, borrow the neighbor's dog or something and uh, try to make sure he's out patrolling the yards, you know, when they might uh, find their way up there. All right. I appreciate it.